What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV. Today we're going to talk about the things to know when visiting Norway. Let's do this. Alright, let's talk about the affordability and the cost of visiting Norway. As you would imagine, as you've been told, it is expensive. Uh, the accommodation though, I've seen, can be anywhere between $120 a night all the way up to $250, $300 even here in the winter. So. It's much more affordable for the hotels than I even suspected or I even thought. All right, here, let's talk about the currency, the krona. If you're coming to Norway to spend your euros, you're not going to get very far. Most of Scandinavia uh, keeps their own currency. They don't use the euro, but here it's definitely the krona, K-R-O-N-E. Also, there is 5.2 million people living in Norway. Some other interesting things to know about Norway. It is a long country that extends north to south, but also has a width that is largest width is in the south. But it is a tale of two different countries. In the south, they get a warmer climate. In the east, they get a flat land with uh, forest. In the west, they have the for fjords. And then in the north, they have the Arctic climate. So it's a very diverse climate. You can get four seasons here. So I just wanted to point that out. That bird is really talking. Next up, let's talk about the nature. Some of the things that people come here for are the polar bears or the northern lights. Let's talk about those. Or even the fjords. So there are no wild polar bears on the northern part of Norway's mainland, but they are on islands. So Norway has them, they're just not on the mainland of Norway. So you're not gonna get a polar bear walking across the street up in Tromso or something like this. Now, if you're coming for the Northern Lights, you're gonna get those up in Lofoten or Tromso in the north. Further south, they're rare, but they can be seen. Also, you're not gonna get those in the summertime. So if you're coming for the Northern Lights, you need to come in the winter in particular, if you really want the good luck, but late fall or early spring is when they kind of start fading. So the summertime, remember the midnight sun. Right now it's 10 p.m. and you can see it's still sunny. That's Norway for you in the summertime. And when it comes to the Fjords, those are on the west coast. Here in Bergen is a great place to go. Even Oslo, you can get some. So checking around there is a great way to do that. Now, when it comes to food, I would say that food is pricey. Definitely taxis are expensive. There is no Uber. There is no Lyft. They do have a ride-sharing application in Oslo, but I haven't tried it here in Bergen. So, uh, overall, I would say the cheapest way to get around public transportation, staying outside of the city center in hotels, uh, you know, those are the kind of ways to save money. But eating out in Norway, it will get you. Taking taxis in Norway will get you. So be mindful of that. All right, let's talk about safety. A lot of people want to know about this subject. Now, when it comes to safety in Norway, it is considered one of the safest countries in all of the world. You will definitely feel safe here. Even at 10 o'clock as I'm walking around right now. I don't really feel like there's a threat anywhere around me. If you go hiking in the forest or in nature, there's no real threats out there. Um, even in the waters here, not a lot of threats. Uh, so it's overall a very relaxing experience in terms of safety. You don't have much to be concerned about. Uh, like I said, petty crime, not really a thing. Violent crime very rarely happens. And when it does, people are like very devastated and shocked by it. So yes, you can be a solo traveler, solo female traveler, even walking around at night and not really have too much to be concerned about other than just basic precautions. Here's a look at some of the living quarters here, these apartments. Now, when it comes to planning your vacation or your trip to Norway, you're going to wanna make sure you book your train travel ahead of schedule. Also, your hotels in the small towns, make sure you also book those ahead of schedule because they do book quickly in the small towns where the fjords are. So make sure you get ahead of schedule on your cruise and ferry tickets, your train tickets, especially to the smaller, more hidden gems, 
and your hotels in those small towns. You don't want to get to the small town and then find out that it's already booked by the time you got there and there's no place for you to stay. Now, when it comes to what to wear in Norway, it's really going to depend on the season. If you come during the summertime, I would say you should pack clothes that resemble four seasons style packing. That means a sweater and a raincoat along with shorts and sneakers. Okay, because the weather can do what they say all four seasons in one day in any given place in Norway. Now, in the wintertime, skip the shorts. You're not going to need shorts, obviously. We're talking way up here in terms of latitude. In fact, if you look at a map, they're even higher up than the UK, Scotland. It's up above all of that. We're in Scandinavia. So up here, we're close to the Arctic. And in the winter time, it's going to get bone chilling cold, especially as you get closer to the Arctic, it gets very cold. So you're going to want to pack for extreme cold temperatures. But because of the midnight sun in the summertime, I would recommend bringing some sort of eye mask. Uh, also in the winter time, expect a lot of darkness because it's the polar opposite of what they get in the summertime. <laughs> lots of sun in the summer, lots of darkness in the winter time. So prepare. And some more important facts about Norway. There is 5.3 million people in the country altogether. Now they do have an island way up in the Arctic Circle also that is considered part of Norway called Svalbard. And this is actually where you'll see the Arctic foxes, the walruses, and the polar bears. Now, when you are talking about the language that they speak here, that's important to know because it's an old Germanic language but it is known as Old Norse. So this is an old Norwegian language and the whole language of, in and of itself is called Norwegian. But have no fear, they do speak plenty of English. Almost everyone I encountered spoke English. That is basically the universal language all across Scandinavia. Now, why do they call it Norway? Well, it's an old English word for the North Way, the way to the North. That's why they call it Norway. You could also say Norse way, Norse. Norse is North. So a Norseman is a Northern man. Makes sense, right? They're way up here in the North, near the Arctic Circle. And when it does come to food, expect lots of fish to be available because they have the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, and they also are close to the Baltic. So plenty of different fish varieties for your palate. Also, they do eat reindeer up here. I had a reindeer sausage. They also love bread and dough products. I noticed that everywhere I went in the morning, there was plenty of croissants, lots of pizza at every 7-Eleven or any corner store. So people live off of dough up here quite frequently as well as fish. And with that being said, they do say that Norwegian salmon is among the best in the world. Let's talk about the Vikings because this is something that's become very popular over the years with all the movies about Odin and Thor. Let's talk about this. So Scandinavia in and of itself is where the Vikings are said to have come from. This was before 1000 AD. Now the place they lived was mostly Sweden, Norway, they made it all the way to Iceland and Greenland, where they set up new settlements. Some have even said that they discovered Newfoundland and called it Vinland. This was the explorers Leifert Eriksson and his father, Eric the Red, who were responsible for the Norsemen going in that direction towards the west and some areas around Denmark. But they also went into Scotland. Now, with that being said, you would almost think that Norway appears to be the epicenter of where the Vikings were located. And you could probably say that is true. But it seems like between Sweden and Norway, most of the Vikings came from there. And they do have museums that go all the way back in time to the Viking era. Overall, I would say that Norway is definitely a place that you want to visit. If you can, try to do a cruise. That seems like the best way to see Norway. But if you're not going to go on a cruise ship because that's not your thing, you would probably start in Oslo and I would spend 48 hours in Oslo. It's a nice place. Then I would take a plane to Bergen. I would spend 24 to 48 hours there. And then I would go north and I would probably spend a couple days exploring around the fjords, up in the north, 
around the Arctic Circle, especially Lofoten, Tromso, that whole area right there. And with all that being said, thanks everyone for watching this episode of Island Hopper TV about things to know when visiting Norway. We also made a couple travel guides from Bergen and Oslo as we head now east towards Sweden and Finland. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to this channel. See you on the next one.